Ethan Allen's leadership was just as important as George Washington's leadership in aiding the colonies in the victory of the Revolutionary War. One might wonder how Ethan Allen can be as important as George Washington. This documentary will explain how Ethan Allen became one of America's greatest leaders, leaving an impacting legacy for America. This great leader was born on January 21, 1738, in Litchfield, Connecticut. Allen had always had a thirst for fame, and he certainly got it. Allen was a normal boy. He was educated and grew up in a poorer family. But Ethan Allen's fame really started when New York started taking land from some colonist landowners. Allen and his cousin created a group called the Green Mountain Boys. The Green Mountain Boys were a militia formed in 1770 to defend property rights of landowners. Beginning in 1771, the Green Mountain Boys launched a campaign of terror tactics such as threats, humiliation, and intimidation to chase off anyone who attempted to push New York control over the area that the Green Mountain Boys protected so well. At the time, New York's governor was a man named William Tyrone. Tyrone called the Green Mountain Boys the Bennington Mob and issued warrants for the arrest of Allen and the rest of the Green Mountain Boys. The bounty on Ethan Allen was 20 pounds, which is $3,000 today. In 1773, the governor raised the bounty to 100 pounds. How was Ethan Allen able to get out of this situation? He got out by capturing Fort Ticonderoga. The capture of Fort Ticonderoga was the first victory for the colonies in the Revolutionary War. To give some background on the Revolutionary War, it was started for many reasons. The Revolution did not begin because the Americans wanted freedom from Britain, but because they were being denied rights as English men and women. The Stamp Act of 1765 was the first in a series of taxes on the colonies. The Stamp Act required all papers to be stamped, which costed a lot of extra money. The colonists felt abused at this point. They felt even more abused when the Quartering Act was passed. This required the colonists to hold the British troops in their house. Last was the Townshend Acts, which put taxes on some common goods, including tea. The Townshend Acts were later removed on all products, except tea. This made the colonists very mad and led up to the Boston Tea Party. All of this, combined with the fact that the colonies were only allowed to trade with England, caused an outrage, a revolution, thus creating the Revolutionary War. The capture of Fort Ticonderoga was the first major event in the war. On May 10th, 1775, Ethan Allen was planning on invading Fort Ticonderoga alongside Benedict Arnold. He wanted to invade because he knew the location of Ticonderoga was a strategic point for the colonies to own. It is located on Lake Champlain, which is northeast of New York. Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys arrived outside of Fort Ticonderoga early in the morning. Benedict Arnold was running late and showed up an hour later. Arnold wanted everybody to follow him into battle. However, the Green Mountain Boys were loyal to Allen. They would not follow anybody else into a battle but him. So, Arnold and Allen co-led together. They charged in, expecting a fight. Instead, they found sleeping British soldiers. In fact, the Revolutionary War was so new, the soldiers didn't even know what was happening. Instead of fighting back, the British soldiers surrendered immediately. This was the first official colonial victory of the Revolutionary War. Fort Ticonderoga had loads of cannons. These cannons were transported back to the colonies and were used throughout the war. In fact, these very cannons were used during the Siege of Boston, which was when the colonies took Boston back from the British. Unfortunately, Ticonderoga was taken back in 1777 by the British. It stayed that way until the war was over, with the colonies having a victory. In 1820, Fort Ticonderoga was bought by a New York merchant. Now it is a historical landmark that one can take a tour of. 
After Allen's success at Ticonderoga, the Green Mountain Boys immediately joined the Continental Army. However, Ethan Allen left the Green Mountain Boys in 1781. Ethan Allen was planning on capturing Montreal, a British-controlled city in modern-day Canada. Allen's planning was not nearly as good for this battle as the previous one, Fort Ticonderoga, and the timing was bad. Allen was trying to retreat after failing an attack on Montreal when captured by the British. Allen was put on a British ship to go to England and get executed. Allen ultimately escaped execution. He escaped because the British were afraid that if they executed anyone from the colonies, there would be even more retaliation towards the British. On May 6, 1778, Allen was sent back to America as part of a prisoner exchange. Allen returned to the new state, Vermont, and was given the rank of Major General in the Vermont Militia. Vermont officially became a state in the year 1777, when they declared their freedom from Britain and their fellow colonies, and created the Republic of Vermont. Allen spent the rest of his life petitioning to the Continental Congress for Vermont to officially and finally become a state. Once the war was over, Vermont could not join the colonies as a state because New York, Massachusetts, and Connecticut had already claimed the land as their own. Vermont contacted the Canadian governor, Frederick Haldimand, about rejoining the British Empire. After a successful life, Ethan Allen died on his farm along the Winooski River on February 12, 1789. He was 51 years old when he died. Two years after Allen's death, Vermont officially became a state, the 14th state of the Union. Allen left a legacy, a legacy that still impacts us today. If it were not for the careful and precise planning of the capture of Fort Ticonderoga, Ethan Allen and Benedict Arnold may have never captured it. If they hadn't captured it, the cannons would have never been gathered and there would be less members of the colonial militia because they could have died. If they never got the cannons, the British would have been less intimidated during the siege of Boston, which was a major turning point because the colonies reclaimed Boston. If Boston was never claimed by the colonies, then the British would have had a strategic advantage over the colonies and could have won the war. If the war was won by British, we could still be under British control and not have our own freedom. Also, if Allen never started the Green Mountain Boys, Vermont would not be a state. This would make our state count to be 49 states as of today, and our flag would be different. This is not a major difference, but it is a difference. Overall, if Ethan Allen never decided to step up and be a leader, a leader of the Green Mountain Boys, a leader in the capture of Fort Ticonderoga, a leader of Vermont, then this entire country could be altered and be under British rule. Allen left a very important legacy, and he should be remembered just as much as George Washington, because he was as important as George Washington in his leadership. Sometimes the most important people go by unnoticed. Ethan Allen, unfortunately, is one of those people. George Washington and Ethan Allen are both very important leaders, and Ethan Allen needs to be noticed as much if not more than George Washington.